called out three sixteenths, and I have quarter and three eighths. Welcome back to the Mountain Dream Home Story. We're picking up in the middle of the summer as we're about to begin a second timber frame building, even bigger and more ambitious than the first, Nick's workshop. Building this big of a building isn't free, and though Nick prefers to work in town doing fine carpentry and cabinet work for local clients, we make the most money when he travels. Which is why on our homestead this year, for the entire month of August, Dad was gone. He spent his days working hard to build up the funds to build his dream shop, and he spent his evenings on his computer working out the details of the design. 16 feet this way. And it's actually going to end up being um, 46 feet this way. These steel posts, I have, um, I have 12 of them. These steel posts are every eight foot zero. You can see how the footprint goes a little bit beyond that that post. The end walls will be wood framed. Two wood framed walls. And there is a ridge line right down the middle there. Eight foot wide doors at either end that uh, swing that way. Same thing over here. Same opening, and that gives me uh, an eight foot pull through essentially. Um, so if I wanted to take a vehicle in there, I could. If I wanted um, a, I don't know, a lumber delivery or something to pull right in there, I could probably pull that off. There's a, uh, our road is right up here, and this is sort of a sheer face. And then there's also, a drop off here. So on our mountainside, it's all about terracing and how you can create a flat spot and squeeze things in uh, on the flat spots available. So the reason why the wood wall is off of the last post is that I said I was going to use these as, as racks. And so what this does is allows me to make a rack arm on each post without it being buried in the wall. So if I have material, I can store it right across that rack going that way. Um, if it were buried in the corner, I wouldn't have the ability to get on, on the other side of it in order to do that shelving. I do both woodwork and some steel work, so I want room for runoff tables um, for both materials. I want a separate zone for cutting steel sticks and a separate zone for cutting wood sticks. So along this side of the shop, I'll do brackets that go into every post and I will have steel runoff table here with a, a chop saw right in the middle, maybe towards one end somewhere in this run and the same setup here for wood with a chop saw in it somewhere here. A lot of uh, stick lumber is 16 feet, so I'm allowing myself 16 or 18 feet to store that material right above the saw where it would be cut. A lot of steel material comes in a 20 foot length, so I'm allowing myself 20 feet there um, to store that material above its saw. Now those two runoff tables will be level with each other and I'll be able to go in between them or run over onto the next one if I need to for some reason. Um, but two different areas. Steel work is really dirty. 
woodwork you want to keep kind of clean so uh, it's good to have two different areas for it. This south face I'm going to work windows into these bays in between posts sort of up high where I'm not going to be storing as much material. Um, I also need to work out a little bit of a tool room. I had thought about an outside little attached building but haven't made the call on that yet. Um, and I like to work on a 4x8 rolling table. So there will be probably a 4x8 there with the table saw on it so that I'm set up right next to the chop saw in order to use the table saw. Uh, and this also serves as a work surface at times. It's nice to keep your runoff table clear, but I don't always manage it. I had done a lot of drawing on the shop. I had figured out sort of what I was going to use and how I wanted to do it. I didn't really finalize anything, and I certainly hadn't run it past the engineer yet. So I got drawings all put together and uh, in a way that she could easily see what I was intending to do. And uh, the engineer looked it over and got the drawings back to me. Um, she didn't really suggest a whole lot of changes. She didn't change much of anything. Yeah, she's just calling out some beam sizes. The main thing that she contributed this time around uh, was the foundation work. Uh, she really beefed up the foundation in order to uh, sort of minimize the amount of cross bracing I had to do in the, in the rest of the structure. There's a pier here and a pier here. Now we're looking at this end of the shop. So we're looking at one of the uh, one of the short ends. So these are about 16 feet apart here. So this is a 12 by 12 square pier. And then she put at the base of it a 12 inch thick um, 2 6 by 3 6 footer. Um, and what this does is it provides a lot of sort of cross bracing this way and that. So um, in the top of the pier there is a steel plate that is flush with the top of the pier and then I'm able to stand my steel post which is about nine feet long uh, on these on these piers I'll go ahead and draw the other footer there and so in these steel posts, I'm drilling a three-quarter inch hole every six inches down the length of it. And that will give me opportunities to build cantilever brackets for storing material. Up high, down low for the runoff tables. So my chop saw can go there. And so on. So at the top of these uh, posts, there they have a, a quarter inch steel little bracket at the top of each one. And that bracket gets a plate, meaning a big uh, a six by eight beam that ties all of these posts together down the length of the building. Six by eight plates running the whole length, tying all those posts together. And then of course, they, they run long of that last post and help to support this corner of the wood framed wall. So then, then the timber framing starts. So far we've just been fabbing steel and setting some some uh, home milled beams into it, but now we actually do a little bit of joinery. What I have is a, um, it's called a queen post truss. 
So there's still no ridge beam, much like our house. So these are tenoned into there with a peg. These actually have a, a, a half lap joint that is pegged. And then there's a little more steel. I have steel rods. So my queen posts are actually steel rod that run vertically tying uh, tying the rafter to this tie beam. It's a member that's in tension, so it's not uh, in compression, and that's why it can be a three-quarter inch steel rod, um, because the tensile strength of that is, is up to the job. So this area inside the truss is where I was talking about uh, having some storage. I'll probably dry lumber up there. I'll store things that I don't have to deal with uh, very often up there. Um, and it'll just get a lot of stuff off of the floor um, and free up like these lumber racks for things I actually use. So on top of the, or with the uh, trusses, um, I'm laying in four by four purlins, which will then get the, uh, it'll get decked in plywood and then a steel roof on top of that. Also on the walls, I'll be laying in uh, purlins as well. And I'll have to weld little brackets to my steel posts, but that's easy enough to do. And so that sets me up to be able to do board and batten siding or more corrugated steel. Uh, that's most of how I'm gonna build it, at least the parts that I know. So, so far, this exists um, really just in a drawing space. I've drawn this on the computer well enough to communicate to the engineer. I've done some piece drawings so that I know what the pieces parts are that I'm trying to produce over the winter. And I'll just uh, work away all winter long making parts under cover. And then come spring, we'll stand it up and uh, see how far we can get before the next snow flies to make it functional. So when you come back next time, you get to see some heavy things fall. We're gonna cut down some trees and uh, get them all moved around and stored away where we want them. All right. So I'm gonna show you our littlest chickens. They're gonna be our laying hens. These are them. So, just sit and wait. But they might come towards you. You don't want to greet it at them for them the moment they come towards you. Wait for them to peck you. And sometimes you can do this ballet pose with a with a chicken or knee, or you could pretend to be like Harry. this. You could pretend to be here. Uh, you can be pretend to be Harry Potter with it perched on your arm. Wait, is that Alex or Connor? Uh, I don't know. That one's probably Connor, and the one in the and the one just like it. That one that's meaning for us well. It's the uh, it's the Alex. You want to tell people where these names come from? They come from my favorite series called The Land of Stories. The one that was pecking Sadie a lot, that one of those black and white striped ones. The one that's, yeah, about, the one that's about to peck. Yes, this one. It's, um, I think we called it the Big Bad Wolf, right? The Big Bad Wolf. Yeah, those are barred rock. That's their breed, it's barred rock. The black and white ones. And the other black and white one's name is... 
Red Dragon. I'm Nick. Thanks for watching. Mom, this is really fun. <laughs>